Hey guys, it's Chris from Million Dollar Earnings. If you're new to options trading, this video will introduce you to some of the key terms and concepts everyone should know before they begin. After watching this, if you enjoy the video, please hit the like button below. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well to see new videos as I publish them. I also encourage you to visit my website, milliondollarearnings.com. The URL is in the comments, and here I am documenting my journey to create a million dollar a year income stream using options trading. I share my positions as well as the results regularly so you can see firsthand what is working for me. I also share mistakes I make along the way so that you can learn from them and avoid making the same mistakes yourself. So be sure to visit the website and sign up to receive notifications anytime I publish a new post. First, what is a stock option? A stock option, which we'll simply refer to as an option, is just an agreement to buy or sell a specific stock at a specified price on or before a specific date if the owner of the contract exercises their option. That's it. You're either buying the option to buy or sell a stock from someone or giving someone else the option to buy or sell a stock to you. And there are only two kinds of options, calls and puts. And the difference between them is simple. A call option gives you the option to buy a stock at a specified price on or before a certain date. A put option gives you the option to sell a stock at a specified price on or before a certain date. That specified price is called the strike price, and that certain date is called the expiration date. It's that simple. Options trading means you either buy or sell a call or a put with a specified strike price and a certain expiration date. If you understand this, you now know the basics of all options trading. Now, there are option strategies that involve more than just simply buying or selling a call or a put. At some point, you'll come across some of these strategies, such as vertical spreads, three-legged spreads, butterflies, condors, or more. We don't need to dive into these now, but all of them involve buying or selling calls or puts. All option strategies are based on just these two choices, calls and puts. That's why it's so important to get familiar with them. One thing to note, options are also referred to as contracts. And each contract is for 100 shares of stock. When you buy or sell a call or a put, you're buying or selling one contract for the option to buy or sell 100 shares of stock. Now, before we go any further, there's two other terms you need to know, in the money and out of the money. Once you've bought an option, there's three things you can do with it. One is you can exercise the option. Another is you can sell the option to close your position. And the third is you can simply allow the option to expire on its expiration date. Whether you buy a call or a put, these are the only three things you can do with it. When you buy a call option, you want the stock price to rise above the strike price. As long as the stock price is above the strike price, your option is considered in the money or ITM. If you exercise the call option and buy the stock at the strike price, you're buying it for less than you could buy it on the open market. The option has value to you. Conversely, if the stock price falls below the strike price, then it is considered out of the money, or OTM. You wouldn't exercise an option to buy at a strike price that is higher than the current market price of the stock. If you're talking about puts, a put is in the money when the stock price is below the strike price, and it's out of the money if the stock price is higher than the strike price. You wouldn't exercise a put option to sell your stock at a strike price that is lower than you could sell the same stock for on the open market. So now you know what the difference is between a call and a put, what a strike price is, what the expiration date signifies, and what in the money and out of the money mean. Let's start to look at what happens when you actually buy or sell a call or a put. We'll start with calls. You would typically buy a call option if you think the stock price is going to go up and will be above the strike price prior to expiration or in the money at expiration. If the stock rises above the strike price, you can exercise the option and buy the stock at the lower strike price and sell the stock for the higher market price for a profit. Or if the price of the option itself moves higher prior to expiration, you could do a sell close, which allows you to sell your option for a profit, closing the position. You would typically sell a call option if you believe the stock price will never rise to or above the strike price before option expiration. When the stock price doesn't exceed the strike price at expiration or remains out of the money, 
the option will expire worthless and you get to keep the amount you sold it for. If you're just starting out, you won't be able to sell a call option unless you already own 100 shares of the stock. This makes it a covered call and prevents the risk of you being short on the call option if the stock price skyrockets. Now, puts are the exact opposite of calls. You typically buy a put option if you think the price of the stock will be below the strike price in the money before expiration. If the stock falls below the strike price, you can buy the stock at the market price and then exercise the option and sell it at the higher strike price for a profit. Similar to calls, if the option price increases as you approach expiration, you can sell the option for a profit, closing out your position. You would typically sell a put option if you believe the stock will remain above the strike price or out of the money at expiration. When this occurs, the option will expire worthless and you get to keep the full amount you sold the option for or the option premium. In order to sell a put, you must have enough cash in your account to be able to buy 100 shares of the stock at the strike price. If the price of the stock falls below the strike price, it is likely the option will be exercised and you will have to buy the stock at the strike price. One thing to remember, when you buy an option, you can execute it at any time. You don't have to wait for it to expire. So if you buy a call option and the price of the stock rises way above the strike price and you think it will fall again before the option expiration, you may want to go ahead and execute it early or sell close the option to lock in your profit. The flip side of this is that when you sell an option, the other party can execute it at any time also. You have to be prepared that any call or put that you've sold can be exercised on you at any time when it's in the money. Unfortunately, you have no control over when the owner of the option decides to execute it up to expiration. Now, most of the time, an option won't be exercised or assigned before expiration, but it can happen. Another important thing to note, if the option is in the money at expiration, most brokerages will automatically assign or exercise it. If you have bought or sold a call or a put, and even if it's just one penny in the money, it will probably execute. So it's usually a good idea to buy or sell to close your option prior to expiration. This should give you a lot better idea of the basics of options trading. As a matter of fact, with what we've covered here, you now know enough to buy or sell a call or a put. But there's still a lot more to learn when it comes to options trading. I hope you enjoyed this video. And again, if you did, please hit the like button below. Also, make sure to subscribe to see more great videos just like this. Thanks for watching.